Hi, I'm Wayne Allen Root for Personal Liberty. As I record this video, the Chicago teacher strike has just ended after entering a second week. Isn't that nice of them? The Chicago Teachers Union is getting a raise in the middle of a depression and they've decided to allow the kids to go back to school. These are such selfless people. It's obvious they're always thinking about the kids. But even though the strike is now over, this is a perfect time to talk about it, to analyze what just happened. This is what President Obama would call a teachable moment. This is Exhibit A for what ails America, for why America is broke, why America is dysfunctional, why our public school system is in shambles, why our kids aren't prepared for even the most modest of jobs. The Chicago teachers are among the highest paid in the nation, and their results are among the worst in the nation. And in the middle of this Obama Great Depression, the second worst economic crisis in our nation's history, they went on strike because they were unhappy with a big fat raise and they didn't want to face evaluations of their performance from time to time. The saddest part of all is how foolish government is. This is like an episode of Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> the negotiation from the start involved government offering a raise while the greedy teachers union asked for a bigger raise. They were fighting over how much of a raise to give grossly overpaid employees in the middle of the Great Depression. There was never even a thought of cutting their compensation or basing it on performance like so many of us in the private sector. The financial crisis we are in as a country is because government is full of fools who only know how to negotiate upward with other people's money, with your tax money. How broke's America while well, we're giving out raises to teachers? Well, in Cook County, Chicago, the Treasurer recently reported the debt is $108 billion, with a B. Most of that is for pensions for overpaid government employees, and too many government employees. $108 billion in one county and one city. In particular, the Chicago School District faces a deficit of $700 million. Yet the debate was over how much of a raise to give teachers. This teacher strike is Exhibit A for everything wrong with government, especially Chicago government, the place where Barack Obama learned everything he knows about how you bankrupt a country. Remember, this strike was about failing employees who are paid an average of over $71,000 a year, plus gold-plated health care packages, plus, get this, $2.4 million per teacher in taxpayer-funded retirement packages. Yes, I said each teacher gets $2.4 million on average in retirement. Each teacher. Now, my wife and I homeschooled our daughter to Harvard, and she was just accepted at Oxford. There's something wrong here, folks. Keep in mind, my retirement as a business owner is funded only by me. Yet each Chicago teacher's 2.4 million golden parachute is paid by you, the taxpayer. Even though most taxpayers, like us, don't have a pension. And the teachers were on strike? Ha! Keep in mind the disgraceful results produced by these striking teachers. For the $71,000 a year that they get in salary, and the obscene pension of an average of $77,000 a year, these union teachers have produced a graduation rate of 54%. Yet the graduation rate for charter schools in Chicago with non-union teachers, 76%. And what do the charter school teachers get paid? 48000 or so a year. Why do charter schools work so much better? Hmm, could it be because they're non-union? Chicago schools have the shortest school day of any school system in the nation. Only 33% of Chicago students who enter high school will ever attend college. But worst of all are the figures for African-American students in Chicago. Only 1 in 40 will graduate college from black inner city neighborhoods. Think they might use an extra hour in school? These are the results that teachers think demand big raises, fewer teacher evaluations, and more job security. In the private sector, these kind of results would be met with, you're fired. So how should the strike have been handled? When faced with the strike of government employees, former President Ronald Reagan provided the perfect model. In Reagan's case, it was air traffic controllers. These were, theoretically, irreplaceable employees who direct airplane traffic across the U.S. skies and are responsible for the safety of millions of lives every day. And they were good at their job. Unlike teachers, there were no failures or dropouts in the sky under this group of government employees. Yet Reagan simply told the whole striking union to report for work in three days or you're fired forever. Don't report and you're banned for life. That's it. When they refused, Reagan fired them all, lock, stock, and barrel, forever. Reagan replaced them with military air traffic controllers and supervisors until new controllers could be trained and hired. The result, a seamless transition and not one accident. Why didn't we handle the Chicago teacher strike the exact same way? Report to work in three days or you're fired 
forever. Then bring in substitutes and supervisors from across the state and across the country. Offer them full-time jobs at one-third lower salaries, one-half the pensions, and demand bigger contributions for their health care costs. And tell them the school day just got two hours longer. I predict you'd have had lines stretching for miles, with new teachers driving in from across the nation begging to be hired. You'd have had 10 applicants for every job opening. If we had fired these greedy, self selfish union teachers and brought in younger, non-union replacements with fresh ideas, stronger work ethic, and a positive can-do attitude, I guarantee you the kids could only have benefited. Most importantly, the key to my plan would be to incentivize these new non-union teachers with giant bonuses based on performance so that if they produce great results for our kids, their salaries would actually wind up higher than the union contract the current teachers have and combine performance-based compensation with school choice. Give vouchers to Chicago's parents so they could choose the best school for their children. I guarantee you that competition would improve public schools. This is how you bring competition and capitalism to education. This is how you empower teachers and change the lives of our children. Competition works for Coke and Pepsi and Microsoft and Apple. Why wouldn't it benefit our education system? Heck, the results couldn't get any worse. What do we have to lose? I say end the unions, fire them all, and start over. Let's do it right. Because our children's entire future is at stake. I'm Wayne Allyn for Personal Liberty. See you next week. Same time, same place. God bless.